So after long last, Uncle Hardison has made his debut on Monday Night Raw. Now this was obviously a massive expectation for a long time now. And we're talking like back at Backlash all them years ago. Which was like a couple of months ago. Everyone was like, oh yeah, this is it. Uncle Hardy and his bunch of cronies are turning up at France in Backlash. I was wrong. At Backlash in France to just tear the place up and to just wreak havoc. It didn't happen. Then it was King and Queen of the Ring. We all expected it. Remember that? <sighs> I love Logan Paul, right, as a wrestler. He's just fantastic. I love Cody Rhodes as a wrestler. But the, ma the match was so, like, just mid- and then everyone was like, oh, Uncle Hardy's gonna come to like, lift the spirits. And then he didn't. And that pay per view was ass. Nia Jax becoming Queen of the Ring. Not a fan of either, but it's forgotten history, right? Then we moved to Clash of the. Oh. Clash of the Castle, which was just pretty fucking ass as well, not gonna lie. You know, this whole Renaissance era was going so well around WrestleMania. And something. I don't know what it. Like, the excitement levels have dropped, you know? Uh, they just have. But nevertheless, we expected Uncle Hardy to come out there, and he didn't. But then rolls around Monday Night Raw. Just another episode of the highest running weekly episodic TV show in history. And this is where the chaos just broke out. And this is where WWE has just changed forever. Because they made such an impact with this debut that how do we ever just go back to normal now? We don't. You're going to be watching just a normal match next week on Raw, and you'll be on high alert, expecting one of these members of the, what is it, the Wyatt Six, to come out and just start wrecking the scene up, just start killing people. I, I, I don't know how I feel about this, you know, because, like, this is a big deal, this is no, like, retribution, this is no nexus, they're not going to be here for a couple of weeks or whatever, being all strong and then just get dominated, like, they're not losing any matches, they're not getting beat by anyone like it's gonna be a, a a wild ride that's for sure but we're gonna take a look at their debut again not really watch the video because of copyright but you know we will go over step by step what actually happened here how they came out and can i just say this is one of the coolest things that i've seen in quite some time i did say that be was kind of getting a bit boring again there with the recent pay-per-views but this is something very fresh very new but also very familiar because of bray wyatt and uh, the amount of creativity and the amount of ideas that he imploded into this this world, you know? Like, he is the one that started Ramble and Rabbit, uh, Sister Abigail, like, and we have these characters being brought to life now. This is great. It's just a shame that Bray Wyatt can't be here for it. But at least Bo Dallas can become the new scariest guy in WWE, kind of live on in Bray Wyatt's legacy and The Fiend's legacy. Because this is the new fiend right here. This is... I mean, they even started off with the lights going out here. You know? They shut the lights down the exact same way they did when the fiend would come out. And the nostalgia I got right there was fantastic. It even felt like the fiend was coming out. So we then see the door. The door of all doors where Bray Wyatt walked out when he returned back at Extreme Rose 2022. I mean, when you see this, you just know exactly what we're getting here. Like, this is what we've all been waiting for for such a long time. And then out comes Sister Abigail first. Now, look at that face. This is mad because it's not like they're, they're shitty characters, like, trying to be scary, but they're not scary. This is bloody terrifying. Who has done that, that makeup, that work? Where are her eyes? They've been blackened out. What is going on with the feet? Like, it's, it's it's mad. And you know what's even madder? That is Nikki Cross. No, no, no. That is Nikki, almost a superhero, doing the whole, wee, wee, look at me, I'm a superhero. That's her. Are you serious? She comes out with a lantern, crawling, looking all raw and weasley, looking all squeezly, measly, scary. And here's a better shot right here. Like, look at that face. What is... Oh. Yo, wasn't she married to, um, Killian Dean? Imagine him sitting at home watching this being like, Is that... Is that... Is that my fucking wife? What the fuck happened there? <sighs> and I'll be in that accent as well, because he is from Belfast, so big up. Um, so we get Sister Abigail finally coming to life. Wasn't Alexa Bliss Sister Abigail? What was she? No, she was like a, wee, a, a doll or something, I'm not too sure, to be honest. But look at the attire as well. The scrappy, scruffy dress. Looking like the ring girl. You know, the... Um, 
the Unreal, Sadako. Oh, we're going backstage, yeah, that's right. We go backstage, we see people being laid out, but not just people, my friends. That face right there, that carcass, is none other than the Ring General Gunther. They're not taking out the jobbers, boys and girls. They're taking out the top dogs of this company. We have Rambling Rabbit over here, who I believe is Eric Rowan. So, he's back. But look at this shot right here. So, who is that Carmelo Hayes? There's no way. But we have Gunther, who got absolutely clarded around the dome. Because he's bleeding. Oh, God. Not my ring, General. But then, look at the size of this. Not even a man at this point. It's a, it's, it's a rabbit. It's rambling rabbit. But yeah, it is Eric Rowan under there. So, the thing is, though, will we ever actually see Eric Rowan? Or is he always going to have the mask? Is this just Rambling Rabbit from now on? Also, will they have individual matches? Would we see Rambling Rabbit versus Chad Gable on Monday Night Raw? Will that be a thing? Or nah? Because that, that, that seems weird, like. But why not? Yep, he's got the hammer. And again, this looks unreal. It doesn't look like shit. It doesn't look tacky. This is top tier costume design. Like, this is terrifying and then look at this right here they actually come in tear up the headquarters the office well not the headquarters but this is like what gorilla isn't it this is where you where you are before you go out and then we have a few things to take note of here we got someone up here right first of all i think that's joe gacy who is is it marcy the buzzard or is that someone else can't remember these characters, you know, that's, that's on me, that's my bad, but he's one of the characters from the, the Wyatt Six. Who is that? Is that a woman? Is that Raquel Gonzalez? What does she do? And then we get this camera shot where it pans over here and there's just blood splattered up the wall. Uh, and someone is just lying here, probably like a security guard or something. He kind of got the, the worst end of this whole situation. And he's not even a wrestler, I don't think. And that sounds like Tyler Bate or someone, but he doesn't look familiar at all. I think that's just someone from backstage. <laughs> Poor guy. Unlock it. And then we go back. <gasps> Ooh. Ooh. I think that's Joe Gacy, you know. I think that might be Joe Gacy. But that scared the f*** out of me. I've seen this before. But we go behind the curtain just to see that. There's like this World War II gas mask looking thing. Or, you know, that, that thing that they wore back when the plague was around. That is not ideal. <laughs> Yo, they did Chad Gable the dirtiest. Like, they've got the knee up close camera shot. They made everyone know that Chad Gable got f***ing wrecked. But it's deserved after the way he's been acting these past few months. So, that's karma right there. That is karma. But I will say... He's got a nasty gash, blood pouring down the head. I know he's a bit of a dick, but he's going to be out of action for a while, for sure. So, I wish him a speedy recovery. Can't wait for him to get back and start shouting at Otis again, and Maxine, and Akira Tozawa. It'll be fantastic. Um, anyone else? Nope, that's it. And we just move on to the main man himself. I'll give you some audio for this one. Uncle Howdy. And this is just fantastic. This whole getup is absolutely amazing. And it is very much Bray Wyatt-esque. Like, look at this! Oh my god, the hair, the hat, the coat, the gloves. This really is the Fiend's brother, my friends. So there's the final shot right there. They're all out here, and Uncle Hardy lifts the lantern. This is just incredible. This this scene right here. Oh, I'm so happy for them all. It would be very hard for WWE to mess this up. But we have seen some very dominant factions come in and then get wiped out pretty quickly. Or just get nerfed in some way, shape or form. But they cannot be doing anything like that with the White Six. Although I'll tell you what. like We did have Uncle Hardy here before. Uh, back in late 2022. And there was a wee segment with Bobby Lashley and Uncle Hardy. And I just remember seeing Uncle Hardy run at Lashley. And Lashley literally picked him up and chokeslammed him. And I was like, well, that's fucking great. Just kind of making him look a bit weak here, you know. Like, we cannot be seeing Uncle Hardy take any hits whatsoever 
for a good while. Like, he needs to be portrayed as this unstoppable force. As well as his, his crew, the White Six, they've all got to be just complete nutters that would do anyone in. So we'll see how this goes in the coming weeks. I'm very excited to see what happens here. Hopefully you are too. But that's it for now. We're here! <laughs>